Pony Fantasy V Exodus of the Void by G.M. Blackjack Chapter 25 Smoked Mirrors Exdeath slowly phased into existence on his throne. The aides in the room jumped in shock and bowed quickly. Even Sunset swallowed her tongue. She knew when her master was angry. He was methodically tapping his fingers on the edge of his throne. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. Tap, 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 tap. He said nothing as he solidified, but the entire room could feel barely checked emotion wafting off him. An enemy meteor struck down near the edge of the castle, shaking the very foundation of the structure. We are under attack, Xdeath spoke. It wasn't a question, but one of the less intelligent gargoyles decided to answer anyway. Yes we are, my lord. Then why, in the name of all that is and isn't, are you not out there fighting? Uh. The gargoyle felt his insides heat up. He began to gasp, then scream as his very flesh boiled off. Sunset and Starlight dove for cover, some of the others following their lead. Others not sure what was going on. Ah! The insinuating gargoyle exploded, sending fiery chunks of flesh and bone everywhere, catching more than a few unprepared on fire. The satisfaction has dwindled, Xdeath muttered. Starlight winced, looking down at the necklace around her neck. What had happened at the forest? Xdeath was obviously mad. Had the heroes won? Had he won? Was there a winner? It ate at her, not knowing. Sunset stood up tall. My lord X Death, we will endeavor to destroy the enemies. Just give the word and we will... No. You two need to stay here. You are... He paused, as if thinking about something he hadn't considered before. Important. Those warriors of light will come to the castle and try to get to the core. You cannot let them. Sunset nodded. As you wish. Starlight nodded in return. At least that meant they were still okay, though she was going to have to confront them now. As they walked out, Starlight sighed. Sunset, do you ever think life is impossible? All the time, Sunset said, twirling her fiery halberd around haphazardly. But we've got to deal with what we've been dealt. We will have the highest of positions when all this is over. The very universe will be ours! Starlight frowned. Yeah, I... I suppose so. I just... Sometimes I wonder if that's it. You know? Like... Like I had something, but missed it. Since it shrugged. Eh, I suppose so. I've wondered if there was more before. But then I realize I have a super duper powerful boss, lots of power, lots of adventure, and an amazing best friend. What more could I ask for, really? Besides that legendary sword you keep ranting on about all the time? Sunset twitched. The Excalibur is worth my attention. Like... Oh, like that necklace you have is. I've noticed how you keep looking at it. Starlight blushed. It's, uh... It's something I found on my adventures. Yeah. By the way, how were those Warriors of Light? You spent time with them. I need to know how to totally show them who's boss. Starlight bit her lip, thinking of her experiences. Twilight Sparkle is the unspoken leader, even though no crystal ever chose her in any way. She's extremely intelligent, and in many ways a more competent mage than I am, though not as powerful. She's caring, determined, and will do whatever she thinks is right. So, the smarty pants? Great. Hate those types. Starlight shrugged. Next, Applejack. She's a down-to-earth type who was chosen to represent, well, Earth. Her powers are hard to pin down, more physical in nature. She looks like an ordinary Earth pony, but is much too strong to be one, and wields a sword like some kind of biped. She's very honest and will tell you whatever the truth is, regardless of if you want to hear it or not. Do not get hit by the heavy hitter. Got it. Next. Rarity. 
Not a fighter at all. In fact, she finds it distasteful and cares more about politics and fashion. Was an actual princess, apparently, though her haughtiness keeps her from being the leader of the others. She specializes in staying back while fights are going on and manipulating time so her friends can achieve victory. Annoying healer. Always annoying. Then we have Rainbow Dash, Rarity's sister. They couldn't be more different. Rainbow Dash is brash, headstrong, and even though her powers relate a lot to magic, she tends to charge into fights headfirst. Her main skills involve launching spells at you from any element imaginable, including some sort of flesh-melting spell. She's also exceptional at flying and speed. Ah, a battle mage. Interesting. And lastly, Pinkie Pie. We all know about her. Starlight bit her lip as she spoke. She's not exactly what you expect from a legendary mare. She's happy-go-lucky, carefree, and seemingly random. She's also the most powerful of all of them. She has powers that make no sense, in addition to the ability she has to learn any magic you throw at her. She also has a mastery of summons. Since it smirked, she's the best fighter indeed. I've dueled her twice. I'm looking forward to a rematch. Yeah, she is rather fun, isn't she? Oh, you bet. She will understand what it means to face the great sunset soon. Soon, Starlight said, smiling. Soon. The dropship was speeding back to X Death's castle, soon to join in the war. But until then, Fluttershy had closed the door to the small cargo bay for some alone time. She stared at the ground. The others had tried to be comforting, but they weren't doing any better than her. Rainbow Dash had tried to put a positive spin on things and had just started screaming. Rarity just kept crying despite her forced smiles. Twilight had seemed broken, hollow. Applejack was the only one who seemed to retain their sense, and even then, she was still obviously affected. The yellow pegasus sat down in the cargo hold, glad for some peace and quiet at last. Only, there wasn't quiet. There were voices in the back of her mind. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? What are we going to do? Be calm. Logic will discover a way out. I will make him feel the hellfire! Titan... What? Fluttershy sighed, reaching inside herself and touching the power of the crystal inside her. The summons, all five of them, popped into existence in front of her. Could you all keep it down in there? It's hard to think, she asked. Shiva put her hands over her mouth. Oh, I'm so sorry. We'll... She glanced at Ifrit. I'll be more quiet from now on. Ramu huffed. Why should we be quiet? She wasn't the master we had. She wasn't the one who bested us. Who said we were under her control? Pinky! Ifrit yelled. And you better remember that, Beardy! At the mention of her mother's name, Fluttershy drooped and started crying again. The three elemental summons continued bickering with each other. Titan sat down next to her, shaking the ship. You knew, Master. Yes, Fluttershy sniffed. Though I don't know if I deserve you. You were hers. Her daughter. Right is yours, Titan responded. Right, Fluttershy said. But I'm weak. I can't be the master of you. We can make you strong. But why would you do that? Daughter, was his only response. Fluttershy sighed. She looked at the three elemental summons, still arguing viciously, obviously hurt at Pinky's. Do you want revenge? Them? Yes. Me? No. Revenge is shallow. Fluttershy looked up in surprise. You... you really believe that? Yes. I... I thought I needed to take revenge. You do not, Titan said. Revenge swallows one whole. But... I still want to fight. Right and revenge are different, 
He looked deep into Fluttershy. You can fight. You have our strength. You do not have to dwell on vengeance. Only what is right. Fluttershy sighed. Can I? Not fully. We are all but human. Or pony. Titan looked up wistfully. We cannot be perfect. We cannot be right. But we can try. That's... That's really profound, Fluttershy said. Thank you, Titan. You are welcome. Excuse me. He stood up. Stop! He yelled at the other three. They all turned to him in fear. We are done, he said. Silence, he ordered. The other three nodded vigorously and vanished into the ether. Titan leaned down to Fluttershy. You have our strength, always. Fluttershy nodded, feeling a little better. Here we are. We can see the battle now, Applejack said. The island of X-Death was on fire. Meteor impacts were everywhere. Part of the castle had collapsed, and only one of the towers even remained standing. It didn't look good for X-Death's forces, but they kept fighting anyway, unwavering loyalty for their master driving them forward. We've been given coordinates, Twilight said, looking at the screen, eyes unfocused. Limestone, apparently. Land where they say, Rarity said. We need to stop this madness. Rainbow Dash growled. I'm going to make X-Death suffer. Slowly. Fluttershy put a hoof on Rainbow Dash's shoulder and shook her head slowly. What? No. Bitterness leads to bitterness. What do you suggest then? That I forgive him? Fluttershy winced. No, but don't let your only drive be revenge. It doesn't work. Rainbow Dash twitched. But I... Then she realized who she was talking to. Pinky's daughter. I... I see. But we will still fight, Fluttershy said. Always. Always, Applejack echoed. Twilight mumbled something, a faraway look in her eyes. The dropship landed in a camp, doors sliding upward to reveal a bunch of makeshift trenches and tents in a scorched landscape. Limestone was there, ready to meet them. She looked like she was barely holding together when they came out. Then she realized Pinky and Marble weren't with them. Where are they? She deadpanned. Marble's with Discord, Fluttershy said. Pinky's... gone. Limestone grinned. Well, that's just great. You know why it's great? Rarity gasped. What? My power runs on anger, pointy maggot! Limestone yelled, drawing her swords from seemingly nowhere. It's time for some death! Is there a plan? Applejack asked. Nope! Limestone yelled. They're weak anyway. Gabby, you're in charge. Warriors of Light, we're making the push. Try to keep up. Then Limestone was off, smashing through a wall of earth, keeping the bullets of the enemy out. She charged right into ranks of dozens of gargoyles, slicing them in half with deadly precision. Two sisters, she yelled. Do you understand? Two! Two! She roared, berserking even more than Applejack. You will all pay, and you will all wish you were allowed to suffer in the deepest pits of Tartarus. It's too good for you. Rainbow Dash glanced at Fluttershy, understanding. What was before them was a mare overcome with anger. A mare who had lost control of herself and her life. It was a harrowing sight to see a mare lose all sense of her dignity and integrity, losing all restraint and honor stooping to a level so low that she might as well be one of the enemy. But she was leading them to the castle, so they followed and gave support where they could. But they kept their distance. Lonstonen was in such a fury they expected she might cut them down by accident. Though, would it be an accident? 
She was just out for blood, after all. They arrived at the doors rather quickly, limestone tearing the one that was still on its hinges off. Several squads have been sent in here already, she growled. None reported back. Time to do it myself. Come. They crawled through the familiar corridors, the sounds of battle outside, though a lack of excitement on the inside. The occasional gargoyle or pony was easily taken care of with a loose spell fired absent-mindedly. They charged through hall after hall, room after room, looking for ex-death. They found nothing. Something's wrong, Twilight said. These rooms, they all seem empty devoid of detail, and I swear we keep entering the same rooms again and again, but we don't see any of those we've killed. Applejack grunted. We're being lied to. This castle isn't what it seems. Limestone growled. No kidding. She shook. Pinky would have been able to figure it out. She just knew things. Everyone looked at the ground. I'll try dispelling the illusion, Twilight monotoned. Give me a few minutes. Marble silently watched the statue of Discord. He silently watched back. She heard the sound of flapping wings behind her. She hummed. Hey, Marble, Gilda said, entering into a coughing fit. Marble shot her a look. What? I know I'm sick. I didn't expect to come back from here. Marble's eyes widened. She shook her head. You know you have to do it, Gilda said. Pinky was the only one who could navigate that mess otherwise, and you sensed her passing just as I did. Marble looked down at the ground. She sighed. Then she turned to Gilda and nodded. Good. I'm dying anyway. Don't feel guilty. Marble spoke. It's not guilt. It never is. It's pity. Oh? The pain, was all she said in response. Then she looked deep into Gilda's eyes, asking if the griffin was sure. Gilda nodded. Maud placed her hoof on the ground, and a magical circle surrounded Gilda, shifting from the normal purple color to a deep, menacing red. The glyphs appeared, latching onto Gilda's skin, making her scream. Marble winced. The blood sacrifice hadn't even really begun. There was a reason she never did this. Gilda yelled as her talons began to turn into dark red charcoal dust, her wings fraying at the edges. Her eyes began to melt, and her blood started to pool in an unnatural shape. She gagged, letting out her last words. Dawn is over! Now comes the light! The darkness has no sway! Arrgh! Then her vocal cords faded the griffin now unable to make noises, but she suffered for a full five minutes before she was reduced to cinders. The spirit of the sacrifice rose from the ground, a formless red ethereal blob, then it shot towards Exdeath's castle, ready to make things right. The shrine was once again the way it was. Marble stared once more into Discord's eyes. She sighed. Discord seemed to stare at her judgingly. Twilight felt a force of magic blow past her, infecting the very castle itself. That's not me, she shouted as the illusion began to fall. The simple brick walls became fleshy, red, wet, seemingly made of faces. The ground became red, covered in a carpet woven from pony hair. The ceiling dripped blood and other bodily fluids, the air of the place feeling warm and damp. Limestone was disgusted. Then she realized what had happened. Oh no. What? Applejack asked. Gilda, she... She must have sacrificed herself. Limestone sat on the ground, unable to move. She... She was the only one left with enough connection to Ekstath. Why? 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 A voice screamed from the castle itself. Limestone paid it no mind. 
She had broken, no longer able to understand the world around her. Instead, the white light that began to take shape before them was left to the Warriors of Light. It was two-legged, two-armed, and humanoid. It was also green, but encased in a white aura that kept its true form from being seen. I am Carbuncle, he said, the voice hard to pin down, the illusion of this castle. Oh, Twilight said. I don't suppose you'd be interested in telling us where X-Death is? I... Carbuncle twitched. Gah! He has me bound. I cannot move. I am bound by Edolan rules. So, we have to fight you before you can help us? Sadly, yes. My ceiling is more advanced than most. He sighed. Hero of magic. Bound to a castle of darkness. Fluttershy spoke up. We... We don't want to hurt you. You must, for you need to be taken to X-Death. Fluttershy summoned Shiva. Shiva smirked. Carbuncle? Come on, it's us! You were freed as well? Good. You should be able to take care of me quickly. Make it swift and bind me to the summoner. It will be a relief to be free of this hell. But it'll hurt, Fluttershy objected. Pegasus, your meekness fills my heart with joy. Rest assured that when the illusion was dispelled, my pain was decreased a hundredfold. Defeating me will do nothing worse than I have already experienced. Uh, okay, Fluttershy said. Titan, Ramu, could you please be gentle? Sure, my lady, Ramu said. Ifrit said nothing and just started burning Carbuncle. The shifty humanoid took the damage head-on, the rules forcing him to respond, punching Ramu out of existence. But this allowed Shiva to freeze him solid. He retaliated with a burst of magics, white powerful bursts that pushed the summons away. Rarity grunted, trying to stop Carbuncle's time, and failing. What? Rainbow Dash grunted, here, I'll just drain the magic from him. Her wings lit up in a purple color, and Carbuncle's power began to flow into her. Yeah! Carbuncle gasped. Good. Good. Now finish it! Titan appeared, driving Carbuncle into the ground. He exploded, and his essence flowed to Fluttershy. She was crying. Do not let tears fall, fair maiden. I am eternally grateful for what has been done here. I bind myself to you. Okay. Down the hall, first door on the left. Take the third right, and you'll be in a hall leading to X-Death's private chambers. Hurry, time is of the essence. The Warriors of the Light nodded, then turned to the broken limestone. Twilight sighed. She's... She's too far gone. She's snapped. We can't just leave her, Rarity objected. No, we can't. Twilight said. She lifted Limestone into the air, touching her mind. Limestone Pie, you must return to your army. I must return to my army, she said weakly. Twilight set the Earth Pony down, and she walked away. I'm not sure how I feel about that, Applejack said. She wasn't capable of thinking, Twilight said. But yes, that is wrong. The five mares looked down the hall. Well, Rarity said, I guess this is it. A bit of a final confrontation, if you will, going up against the source of all our problems. They trotted down the hall. Rainbow Dash sighed. He... he's evil. We need to kill him. Fluttershy reluctantly nodded. Yeah, but the Warriors of Dawn couldn't kill him only seal him away in the other world. We aren't doing that again, Rarity said. This menace must end. You're all right, Twilight said. We cannot let this stand. So much death has come from this man. He must not be allowed to stand any longer. He must be struck down. Careful, Fluttershy said. I... I know, Twilight sighed. It's... 
It's hard. Fluttershy put a hoof on her. I know. They walked through a pair of large double doors, leading into a grand hall. Its fleshy walls pulsed as they entered, the banners shaking in disgusting ways. The torches lit up with an unpleasant blue and orange fire, directing the group's eyes to the large doors at the end of the hall. In front of the doors were two familiar unicorns. Starlight kept her face expressionless, but Sunset allowed herself to cackle. Welcome, warriors, to the most amazing hall on this world, where the greatest of showdowns will occur. The champions of X-Death versus the warriors of light. Betting pools are open 24-7, though not even one is going to be needed before the verdict is certain. You, Rainbow Dash said, pointing at Starlight. You! Starlight made no response. Say something, you traitor! Starlight twitched her face contorting in rage. You, 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 she choked. Never mind, I'm not giving you a response. Her face darkened. You will not be making it to X-Death. That's right, Sunset shouted. Hit the music, lights, camera, action. The hall changed. The fleshy walls became more colorful a strange disco ball dropped from the ceiling, and an audience of strange blobby creatures filled the sidelines. They cheered. What in... Applejack began, but Sunset's announcer voice stopped her. Prepare for the showdown of the ages. The fate of the world hangs in the balance. Welcome one and all to the greatest battle in the history of ever! I have been missing years of doing this. I really wish I'd realized what a what a delight I have in doing this sort of thing so much sooner. And maybe it didn't help that I was a bit shy when I was young. Okay, a lot shy. But still, this is fun. I like doing sunset. <laughs> And then there's Carbuncle. He's a very interesting character to work with. Yes. <laughs> okay, evil laughter doesn't work so well here, but whatever. I am very amused. I'm having a good day. Anyway, on to more story-oriented aspects of this commentary. Sunset is quick to shorten Starlight's in-depth reviews of each person's personality and combat style into just the combat style portion. She's, uh... She's not treating them as much as people as obstacles. As far as I can tell. With the exception of Pinky. <laughs> it looks like Starlight is having second thoughts. But I don't think she was threatened into this as one of my previous possibilities. No, she she is willingly here, but she's definitely having second thoughts. Okay, serious question time. Does anyone remember the albino chocobo? Now if we include him, when she pulls all five summons out, He's one of them, and then we also got Titan, and the three elementals, that's five. But no mention of him is made here, by name, by, by any sort of description that specifies him. I think he got retconned out mid-scene, that is currently my best guess as to what actually happened. And my explanation is the one that I and my little sister came up with separately when I was discussing this with her. He simply wandered away during their discussion, and will never return. Maybe I forgot, and the albino chocobo does show up later, in which case that's non-canon. But until I get a better explanation, either from the story or GM, he wandered out the airlock and flew away while they were on route. And thus was the end of the albino chocobo. I don't know what else, I mean, he... All five of them, and then there's nothing. 
I don't know what happened here. GM, I'm mad a mystery. Please explain. Very good handling on the difference of vengeance and justice slash prevention of per further damage. I'm very much a fan of what Titan's putting forth here. I support it thoroughly, and I think I made comments to this effect way back when Spike died. The second time, which was the first time he actually died, but then there was the time he got nearly ripped to pieces by a Kraken. You know the time. When the building fell on his head. Okay, I didn't mean it to sound quite that, uh... What's the word? Not quite unsympathetic. Uh, callous? Uh, yeah. Anyway. Hmm. Honest consideration. If the choices were between X death wins and letting Discord out, and I do believe Discord could give it X death a run for his money, I think letting Discord out to fight X death would be the right move, and I think he would in fact fight. Cause, yeah, X death's thing probably not gonna be the best for Discord, but there is the off chance they would team up, and that would be horrible. So let's not do that, and let's hope our heroes can win without letting a different Eldritch God out of his box. Yes. Let us hope for that. Probably unrelated, but the most powerful creature I'm aware of in Poyo Poyo lore is also named Carbuncle. He's usually a pet of this one person, but when he does decide to do something of his own, he's apparently really scary. At least game mechanics wise. Ah, mind control for the good of the controlled. A really sticky ethical topic. I support it in this case. I'm not going to make a blank state, blanket statement, but for this case, I think it was the right thing to do. Alright, next time we'll have our big battle with Sunset and Starlight. Hopefully figure out what's going on with those two. Anyway, thank you all for listening. I hope you had a wonderful time. Goodbye, everyone. Oh, oh, quick, before you go, I just remembered. Titan has no lines that use himself, like, refers to himself in first or third person, except possibly Titan what? Which GM says he's talking about himself, if he recalls correctly. Do bear in mind, this was written six years ago. So it's definitely up for debate. But that is the current theory, and it was made by the author, so it's probably right. But that is the first time he ever referred to himself, and I'm going to be keeping an eye out to see if he refers to himself again, and if so, if he does it in first or third person. Anyway, thank you for listening. Have a good day. For real this time. Not that I didn't mean it for real last time. Whatever. Now it's the end of the recording. I'm just going to stop now. <laughs>